Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Just a quick one to let you know that I have a brand new Patreon page. Come and support this channel and get your hands on dozens of procedural materials. Okay, let's dive into this material. It's another one that I've updated for the release of Blender 4, and it's a natural wood grain material. So here it is, which is uh, basically, I've just arranged a bunch of cubes as wood planks, but we've got the material running down the length of it. And I think it looks kind of cool. So that's kind of the node setup, but I'm gonna show you from scratch. So layout wise, I've got a giant cube that I've basically cut down to be a little studio. I've got three point lighting that are all tracked to the um, object using constraints, which are down here. And then obviously I've got the camera uh, and the object itself, which is just a cube that I've applied a modifier to, to create an array. In fact, I've applied a couple of modifiers to create that array. So let's switch over to the shading tab and enable viewport shading. As ever, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine and my graphics card to do the thinking. I'm going to switch over from the preview now to the tutorial setup. So I've got my blank object here uh, ready to apply a material to. So to do that, we will press new and if nothing appears here press a on your keyboard and the period key on your number pad to bring everything into focus now we are going to need to do some setup we are going to use the principal shader in this but the first thing that I'm going to do is get a texture coordinate node so actually I'm going to drag this out from the base color input and you can drag in reverse and then you've got a little plus symbol just above the end of that when you release your mouse key it will bring up the search box so in press, instead of pressing shift A in Blender 4 Blender version 4 you will just drag out one of the nodes and then that search box will appear first thing we'll need is a texture coordinate and you can see it's got various different options for generated normal and these are the outputs from the texture coordinate so to put that um, in straight away I'm going to choose object and you can see it's basically automatically applied the texture coordinate node and it's attached the object output to the base color as I wanted now I'm going to use the old method shift A to search for a mapping node plonk that in between and here I'm going to change the X value to 18 and that will basically stretch the material. Then I want a noise texture. And we're going to leave it as 3D with the normalize on. Scale I'm going to set to 2. Detail to 16. Roughness to 0.75. And the distortion to 0.75. And you can probably just about make out this kind of colored banding, which is going to be the grain of our wood. But what we need to do is we also need to get some bump in that and we need to get some color in that. So I'm going to take the factor. In fact, actually, I'm going to replace the color from here with the factor. And I'm going to apply a color ramp in between. And also I'm going to bring on a bump node, connect that to the normal of the principal shader and the height to the factor from this noise texture. Now you can see already something happening there. With the strength I'm going to drop it to 0.2. I'm going to leave the distance as 1. And I'm going to need one more node on the color ramp but what we're going to do is bring that first color over the black to around here. So let's say 0.35. We're going to give it a woody color-ish. So let's go for a hue of 0 0.05, saturation of 0.935 and a value of 1. 
kind of gets us there, but maybe just slightly bring the hue back around into the orangey area. And maybe the value down a bit. Mm, no, I'll leave it as it is. What we're then going to do is have a very dark colour here. So let's go for a 0 0.005 and I'll put the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.935 in the other two boxes as before and that will give us a very darkish brown. Uh, for this one I still don't quite like it actually. I'm going to bring that a bit further around so it's slightly more yellow and bring that down to 0 0.95. That'll do me. I'm going to move my cursor over here and press Control c to copy that colour. Select the end colour and control V over that. And then what I'm going to do is actually bring the value down on that. To about there. And then I'm going to crunch this in right next to that very dark colour. And you should be able to just make out that it's kind of dipping those colours as it goes into the troughs. Now for the principled shader, that's where we're going to do the rest of the work. The roughness I'm going to put at 0.55. Metallic is obviously at zero. Don't think I need anything else. The subsurface, nope, I don't need to open that. Specular, we're going to leave, I think as we are. Coat, I've got nothing. Sheen, I've got nothing. And the emission colour should really be black. Although the strength is one, so, uh, zero, so it won't matter. So we can actually collapse all of those because we're not using those. And that gives us our natural wood grain. And because of the texture coordinate and the mapping, it's actually running around the ends and giving us this kind of stippled thing on the side, as you would with sawn wood planks. So let's just see how that's going. So the mapping is basically showing where it's going to go. The noise texture is giving us the kind of wood grain. Now then, could we... If you increase the scale a bit, you'll get finer wood grain. Yeah, that works. Anyway, so the noise texture, texture is the grain. The colour ramp is applying the colour, as you see here. The bump is applying the detail. So we've got lots of sort of knotted wood detail going on in there. And then obviously that's all being combined and piped through the principal shader which gives the roughness, which you could actually take down and make slightly glossier wood. Um, anyway, that's given us the roughness and then that's obviously coming into the material output. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that one. Let me just quickly render that out so you can see that in detail. Just going to drop these down a bit so we don't have too much. And there you go, a natural wood grain effect using procedural nodes in Blender version 4. As ever, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comments below the video. And please also remember to like and subscribe, that really helps this channel a lot. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you for more updates in a few days time.